Massive scale, full self-driving. Uh, there's going to be a dedicated robo-taxi. That's going to look pretty... Fruit... It's, uh, it's going to look, it's gonna look uh, uh, quite futuristic. So if you were watching the Tesla Cyber Rodeo, which I'm sure a lot of you guys were, you heard Elon confirm that 2023 is going to be the year for all sorts of new products from Tesla. We have the Cybertruck, the Semi, the new Roadster, and they are all entering production next year. But for a lot of people, the biggest news that popped out from the event was the announcement that a dedicated robotaxi is also on its way. Hey guys, I'm Kim Java, and if you haven't done so already, please make sure that you've tapped that like button and you are subscribed to this channel. Okay, so first off, let's start with what we know already about this whole robotaxi idea. So this all goes back to exactly three years ago in April of 2019 when we had Autonomy Day, and Elon said, quote, I feel confident predicting autonomous robotaxis for Tesla next year. And then he went on to suggest that Tesla would have a million such cars operating on public roads by the end of 2020. So Tesla's version though of full self-driving really had this competitive advantage because of the way Tesla was collecting and then analyzing their data and using it for computer learning. So during that 2019 autonomy day, there was a lot of discussion because Tesla was ditching and NVIDIA and then using their own custom new self-driving microprocessor chip. NVIDIA is a great company, but they have many customers. And so when, as, as, they, as they apply their resources, they need to uh, do a generalized solution. Um, I, we care about one thing, self-driving. Of course, Tesla did end up moving in that direction and analysts have just raved about why Tesla's biggest asset is in the form of FSD and robo-taxis. And think about the robo-taxi opportunity. That focus on artificial intelligence, so I'm most excited by autonomy. Uh, we think that that could drive $9 trillion in revenue to the robo-taxi platforms within the next decade. And you know, self-driving really comes down to a data problem. Tesla has access to a truly massive amount of real-world photographic data that no other company can even come close to matching. So this basically brings us up to speed with today and the Cyber Rodeo event. So unfortunately, I was not able to attend the event, but a friend of the channel, Tesla Raj, was and is joining us for an inside look. Hey, Raj. Hey Kim, thanks for having me on. So a lot of us watched the live stream and the biggest surprise was the mention of a dedicated robotaxi. So what was the buzz inside the Gigafactory after the event? Was everyone surprised by this whole dedicated robotaxi approach? So the buzz in the room after Elon talked about robotaxi was there was a slight pause while people took in exactly what he's saying. Now Elon's always talked about robotaxi and making your car a robotaxi and being able to participate in a Uber slash Lyft style model. But this sounded a little bit different. And I think the audience took a little bit to comprehend it uh, and then process it and then started cheering, uh, which was followed up by Elon also clarifying that it'll be very futuristic which leaves me to believe that this is going to be a dedicated vehicle uh, that will be fully autonomous, quite different than what we thought it was going to be where we're going to have our cars participate uh, in a Uber style model. So maybe that'll come in the future. Uh, after the event, um, there were a couple people talking about it and had caught it, but I didn't get the full gauge that everyone fully quite understood what this meant and that this could potentially be a brand new dedicated vehicle. I'm thinking something like a canoe style, uh, like a, a van, something that'll get you around town or, or something of that sort. So really exciting to see what this actually means and what it's going to look like. It's a new product. At the event on Thursday night, Elon said Tesla is aiming for everyone in North America who bought the FSD package to at least get access to the beta program. So do you think that there's still going to be an option to add your vehicle to the fleet? Or how do you see all this playing out? Now, regarding FSD and it rolling out to everyone, I know that's Tesla's end goal. They want to get FSD out to everyone, but there's just still so much to learn and understand. I know with my build, I've had it for a while now. I was one of the first uh, that had FSD beta. And so I still think they're going to have 
the option for people to participate in it and maybe not participate in it and add their vehicle to the fleet. I don't know if participating in FSD beta is necessarily going to mean that you're gonna be part of the robo taxi. I still think this version of robo taxi that Elon's talking about could potentially be different than what we're thinking of having our vehicles participate in the robo taxi. I think this, because he specifically called out a futuristic, like it's going to look very futuristic. I'm thinking a dedicated vehicle, um, which is different than us having our vehicles be part of a robo taxi fleet. So it'll be really interesting to see that. Now, as far as our vehicles, I still think that that's coming, but I still think that the program has some work to be done to make it more perfect. Uh, there's still a lot of situations and scenarios that it's learning from. So more data means it's only going to get better. And any ideas on what you think that this is going to look like? I see this robo taxi that Elon talked about as kind of being like a Waymo style uh, in areas that it's knows and it can be available in. So that way they're out there and they're learning and they've got something available today and now. And lastly, I have to ask because everyone is always curious how you get invited to these events. Um, it looked like so much fun. I watched it all. I know a lot of you guys watched it. So any tips for us? <laughs> I wish I had an answer to this about how I got an invite. To be honest, I didn't even receive an invite. Um, I received an invite to Model Y. I couldn't make it to that. I received an invite to the Cybertruck event and I received an invite to the Plaid event, but I didn't get an invite to this event and it was okay. I went in as a plus one, um, but for those of you who don't know, uh, about 80% of the crowd was employees. This event was more to celebrate the employees, which I think is really important. These are the people that make all this happen. It's not Elon, it's the employees that make up Tesla, that deliver this vehicle, that are part of the hardware and software that go into this vehicle, and it was really to celebrate them. There was a vibe last night that was just so energetic that you could feel that these employees were so proud of what they've done and what they've accomplished. Backed by Elon, the vibe was just completely different and it was a true, true party. I would say without anyone feeling guilty, but it was probably the best Tesla event that I've been to. It was phenomenal. What other time do you get to walk through the factory of a major automotive company, just freely walk anywhere, being able to see the presses and the tools that are used to make your vehicle. And there's no barriers. There's just a little rope, um, you know, a full on carnival, food, drinks, the, the performances. It just was like, it was really, really amazing to see Tesla put this kind of show on. Great coordination and arrangement, and it went all without a hitch. We got to see some of our favorite cars, the Cybertruck, the Roadster, the Semi. They were all there, and they're all in their latest build. So the Cybertruck had the side mirrors. It also had the giant wiper. And so a lot of that stuff was fun and really cool to see. But how did I get the invite? I I just went as a plus one to somebody who got an invite. How could you get an invite? I don't know. <laughs> I wish there was some magic way, um, but it seems like Tesla was very limited on non-employees. And so that became very, you know, harder to pick. And I think they just really did kind of a lottery and maybe some people got in because of their social status. I don't know. I just know I didn't get in. But yeah, overall, this event was really cool. I mean, it was just, awesome to be able to walk through this huge factory with no restrictions. It felt like you could just walk anywhere. At points I was walking around and there was no one around me. It was almost like you had free reign to the entire factory to look at things. Now the machines weren't building, but they were moving in the motions that they would normally move in to give you the idea of what they do. And then they sometimes had placards or things in front that showed you what it would normally be doing uh, if this machine was actually operating. So I thought that was fascinating and cool. The lights combined with the music, combined with some of the special things that were there, some picture effects, a little swag bag. There was also a petting zoo out back with a real bull that was back there. Um, they had a henna tattoo shop. They had a merch store with uh, cyber rodeo shirts, um, a, uh, 
a branding tool, a Tesla branding tool. <laughs> it's only for use for food, um, but it was just an overall great experience seeing your friends, um, but more importantly, seeing those employees there, seeing them so excited and so happy about their company, about what they've done, about what they've built is really, really awesome. And it was really cool to hear from them as I walked around hearing some of their feedback and, and them being very appreciative of us as, you know, on social media, um, promoting the brand and, and what they've built. So uh, it was it was overall a really good night. Long, tiring, I'm losing my voice, but it was a lot of fun. And yeah, as you saw, I did rock your shirt to the event. It was just, I thought it was the most appropriate. I knew we were gonna see the Cybertruck, so why not rock the Circle Square Cybertruck uh, shirt? Um, so yeah, Kim, thanks for making a cool shirt that I ordered and I loved wearing to the event, and a lot of people said that they loved it too. Thanks so much, Raj. And if you liked the shirt that Raj wore to the event, please check out our website in the description below. Um, I'm also wearing it today. He was wearing, and I'm wearing, our Circle Square Cybertruck tee. And we've recently added a whole new line of cyber summer and destination charging shirts for men, women, and kids. All right, now that my shameless plug is over, here is my take on everything. Some Tesla owners have been paying as much as ten and $12,000 to get access to full self-driving features. The price for FSD was originally at $5,000, but has had several price increases, and Elon has even gone as far as to say as someday it'll be worth as much as $100,000 when it's fully operational and gets regulatory approval. So that crazy price can be justified though because owners have been told that within a few years they'll be able to register their cars to enter the Tesla fleet of FSD enabled cars. So your car earns you money when you're not using it, especially when you consider that most cars spend over 90% of their lifetime parked and not actually in use. So you can basically offset the expenses or even make your car profitable in a self-driving service like this one. And there's also been some chatter about developing an electric van, but Elon said that that was put on the back burner due to battery supply constraints. When it comes to this dedicated robo-taxi, he didn't elaborate on the details or design on Thursday, but we've seen a proposed image from the Boring Company for its underground transportation system. So here you can see in this design that it has a tall body with large windows, sliding doors, seats facing to the front and sides and no driver controls. It sort of resembles the people mover train cars we're used to seeing at some airports and event centers, but has bulging fenders that kind of cover its wheels. And in terms of competition, obviously there may be people's personal cars with FSD if Tesla allows them to join some kind of fleet. And then there's Waymo. And for those of you that are new to all of this, Waymo is an American autonomous driving tech company. It is a subsidiary of Alphabet Inc., the parent company of Google. Waymo has been operating a commercial self-driving taxi service in the greater Phoenix area called Waymo One. It's just me and the steering wheel here. With Chandler, Arizona fully mapped. It's a very different though kind of FSD than what Tesla uses, partly because Waymo is using more of a mapping style approach. In a nutshell, Tesla's fleet of over 2 million cars have been fleet learning from its users and the cars are gradually being fine tuned to drive in a way that humans do. Just a massive data advantage. It's similar to like, you know how, like the Google search engine has a massive advantage because people use it. And people, the people are programming, effectively program Google with the queries and the results. So in theory, they're able to respond to all sorts of scenarios, not just from programming or code specific scenarios, but also from a common sense perspective. I also can't help but bring it up because I love a good I told you so. But who else remembers a few years ago when Waymo CEO John Krafchick talked trash about Tesla's FSD? Specifically, he said, for us, Tesla is not a competitor at all. He said, we manufacture a completely autonomous driving system. Tesla is an automaker that is developing a really good driver assistance system. To which Elon responded to an article from Clean Technica saying, to my surprise, Tesla has better AI hardware 
and software than Waymo. Also, in the last couple of days, we learned that Toyota is ditching its LiDAR self-driving approach to a Tesla-like camera-based vision-only system. That was just another thing that a lot of people in the self-driving space criticized Tesla for because they went away from LiDAR and radar and chose a vision-only approach. So hopefully some of these companies are learning by now not to underestimate Tesla. What I can say is we're gonna to move to just truly massive scale. Uh, scale that uh, no company has uh, ever achieved in, in, in the history of humanity. Um, and it, and it, we need, that has to happen in order to transition the world to sustainable energy. So let me know what you guys think about the robo taxi. Have you paid for FSD in hopes of joining the Tesla fleet? And what do you think it's going to look like? And lastly, I do want to remind you that a couple of months ago, we did a video telling you about an Austin based company called EV solar kits. That's developing rooftop solar panels and extendable solar kits for the model three and Y. I'll link that video below as well, but they recently started taking orders for their solar kits with deliveries coming later this summer. And we ended up putting an order for one of their 600 watt model three rooftop kits that can give you as much as 25 miles of range a day depending on where you live. So once we get ours, we will definitely give you an in-depth look. And if you're interested, you can use the code KIMJAVA20 to get 20% off their solar kits and check out the link below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, we really appreciate a like and a subscribe and we will catch you next time. Yeehaw! The other thing about this factory was that it's huge. And when I say huge, those of you guys who have been to like Disney, um, yeah, imagine, you know what you feel like after walking Disney all day? That's what it was like at this factory. By the end of the day, I was beat. It was just so much. Um, I didn't check my steps, but I believe it was definitely about 20,000, um, which is about Disney steps, same. <laughs> That's just to put into perspective just how massive this factory was. So much space.